What's up, everybody? Trying to find where my feed is online. There I am. Can you hear me? Trying to find where Yep. My... All right. I hope you're having an awesome day. We're going live early because the weather is really bad in Dallas, and I don't know how long we're going to have. I don't know if we're going to have issues with internet or power, but just in case, I am going live early. So, I don't know if you guys remember me doing these or some like these a few years ago, but I wanted to revisit the pumpkin geodes that we did. Um, these I ordered off of Amazon. They're just foam pumpkins that we are going to make look like geoids. So the set that I got comes in a set of one, two, three, four, six in size ranging from whatever the size this is to uh, maybe six-ish inches. They weren't that expensive. They were, um, Less than $20, I can't remember. But I thought they'd be a cute, crafty thing to do with you guys for this rainy day live. What's up, Bowie? You just need to be in your spot, okay. You wanna come up here? Come on, my little director manual up. Thank you. Say hi. Hello. Okay. You're right there. Lay down. So, which do you guys think we should do? I'm going to do this size, the big one. Should we do it plain Jane like this one where it's just one color on the inside or the one color on the inside with a glitter on the outside and some got on the inside? Whoops or do like a multi-tone one. What do you guys think? Um, what we're going to use today for stickiness is the um, Artistic Painting Studio sizing. I just don't have any other glue. So I'm gonna use this. If you have any other glue, it'd be fine to use. Um, an old raggedy paintbrush that you're okay with getting glue on and then throwing away probably because that's probably going to happen. Um, an exacto blade. Be very careful with this because um, it's sharp and you will cut yourself. Hey, Stone Coat's in here. What's up? So, yeah, today we're going to be crafty and do some pumpkin geodes. And I think after I may like mask the front off and maybe resin the outside. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. So do you guys think two tone, one color or multi-tone? Two-tone, definitely. Cool. Let's carve a pumpkin. I actually have a real pumpkin here that I just haven't um, gotten into yet, but I'm going to. I even have a little tiny, whoop, little tiny Bowie pumpkin here as well. Um, if you do want to use glitter, then glitter. And I'm using, of course, some glitter glass for the dimensional sparkle on the inside of our piece. Wanna get down? Okay. So yeah, that's what we're gonna use. I'm gonna use airbrush to color the inside of the pumpkin, but you could just paint with um, like a hand paint as well. I would recommend for anyone that's doing this for the first time to draw out what kind of shape you want on your pumpkin. 
I'm just going to go for it because, uh, like I said before, I don't know how long we're, we may run out of power because it's stormy here. I don't know. Who's to say? I don't know. This is foam, and so I'm kind of going in at an angle like this so that we can make it more dimensional. I'm not going straight in, I'm going in at an angle. And like I said before, please be very careful when you're using exacto blades. They are surgically sharp. And if you have a dull one, just switch it out. Like I should probably switch this one because I know I'm reckless. Believe it or not, you can cut yourself a lot easier with a dull blade than you can a sharp blade. And I credit my husband for my knowledge of that. I wouldn't have thought it, but it's true. So when you carve into it, I'm trying to make the, the look kind of go from one side to the other and be kind of jaggedy. You don't want straight lines at all because that's that's not geode, is it? Probably not. I think I'm pretty sure that these are just like spray painted foam pumpkins. Maybe not spray painted. Well, probably spray painted, but after they get a coat of like regular paint on there because that's just what it feels like. All right, now that we have our shape cut out, bam, bam, I'm gonna use a something to kind of dig out what we got in there. So I have a trash can handy. And I'm just going, I don't know what the, act. I think this is like a weeding tool to get stickers done. But I'm just gonna kind of pull this layer of paint off and that's going to show us the inside that we have cut. So that's going to be the shape of my geoid. I think it looks okay. What do you think? And then I'm just going to get super reckless and start. You guys see my trash can? I know it's fancy. I know it's super fancy. The answer is no. Let's move my, nope, can't do that either. So, yeah, you can see. So I'm just going to kind of go at it and pull out some of the foam. Once you get it like broken up a little bit, it's easier to kind of just pull it out, but without having a place for you to get your hands in there to like start it, it's, it can be difficult, even though it's just regular fuzzy foam. Actually, you guys can't really see that well what I'm doing. So I'm gonna bring it over here. This isn't the neatest, cleanest part of the process. This is the dirtiest part of the process or the messiest. So just be advised. And I'm wanting to leave some of this irregular texture in there because I think that it looks more like the inside of an actual geode when you, you leave some of that. Jeff just vacuumed the studio today. So I'm trying not to get anything on this floor. And I also think it looks really cool when you kind of go up under the lip a little bit. So it's kind of up in there. Anytime you can vary or um, 
alternate the depth in a piece, I think it looks more natural. So you can see here where we initially cut it in, it's at this kind of angle. And we want that so that we can decide if we want the geode to go up under the lip of it or kind of be still poking out a bit. I love doing things like this and I feel like it's an awesome little crafty project for when your kids are home for Halloween or maybe coming over for Thanksgiving. It doesn't have to be a Halloween pumpkin. It can be a Thanksgiving pumpkin. They're not just for one holiday, right? Or no, all right? I think so. Luckily, this foam kind of flakes off in an irregular kind of look, so it yields itself really well to the look of an inside of a geode where all the rock crystal formations are kind of jaggedy anyways. Oh my goodness. I need to calm down before it looks like I just have an apple core. So we're going to make this side kind of shallow but I still want it to have that jaggedy look to it. If you don't have something like this, you could probably use like a fork instead. So let's kind of dust out all of our excess and see what we got. Oh, I went for like, I just went for it goes all like more than halfway around. I went crazy on this one. Oops. Okay. So now here's the inside of our geoid. Actually, I think I want to have this little area like a lot deeper. I'm going to pluck out a little bit more here. And maybe go like deeper into this area. This part is all just preference. Actually, I guess all of it is preference. So did you guys decide if we wanted to go just two-toned blues or if we wanted to have some of the brown involved? I'll show you the two that I, nope, three that I did earlier and you guys can let me know which ones you um, like the best and what we should go for. So. so these foam pumpkins came from Amazon and I'll um, get the link for you. They come with just white already, but I was like, why should I bother wasting time painting them? Because you can't really spray paint foam if they're going to come as a color and I don't have to do anything. So I went with the brass or bronze colored. Don't forget to dust off your shirt. I didn't even notice. Okay, so here's the one color one. It has just the one shade of aqua in it and the glitter glass. Here's the two-tone. It's got the dark aqua and then the light aqua and some glitter and glitter glass. And then I have this two color one, which I got some of that focus, no, cool. I got some of that um, coppery glitter on the inside, oops. Thanks you guys over at Stone Coat. It's awesome to have you guys join in and jump on a live with us. Sorry, it's not resin, but love it. Thank you guys. Um, if you guys don't know, our resin of choice is Stone Coat Art Coat, and the guys up there were nice enough to hop in and see what I'm doing today, so yay. So two-tone blue seems to be the go-to, and so that's what we'll do. So now, I'm going to start with the darker color, and that color is called something. Turquoise Thalo, and it's an airbrush or fluid from Golden. Looks like this. Okay. It's that color. So I'm just going to push, hello. 
I'm just gonna push the air on and not use any color just to blow off some of this extra foam that's in here. If you're using airbrush, you wanna do this first because if you start going in with color and then the parts, little loose ones start blowing away, then it's gonna leave white spots. So you want any loose ones to just not be there. Um, if you're doing this with a paintbrush, use a really watered down uh, acrylic. I wouldn't use spray paint because spray paint eats foam. Okay, so let's just do this outside area. This is the dark color, so I'm gonna put it on the outside. It's a lot easier to do this with airbrush, but obviously not everybody has an airbrush, so it's perfectly fine to use an acrylic wash. I would definitely recommend making it a wash instead of trying to go in. I accidentally just got some out there, but I think I like that just of dark color. Uh, it's perfectly acceptable to use acrylics. Just make sure it's watered down so you don't um, start brushing away any of the loose. Hey, Carol. What's up, Megan? Thank you guys for coming in and seeing what I'm up to today. I know it's not our usual resin, but I thought it would be something cute for the season. And I thought something you guys should do at home with your family and friends. A little art night never hurt nobody. I can't remember what I was saying, but I think I didn't finish my sentence about using thick acrylics. It's just going to make all of your little foam pieces come loose in your pumpkin. So... If you can, use a wash if you don't have an airbrush. Do not use spray paint. I found out the hard way what happens when you put spray paint in a foam cup. And I think it was on a live too. I wouldn't be surprised if it was on a live. A lot of the things that happen in my life are on live feeds. this a long kind of drip of color. I like it. It looks like this pumpkin is like smiling at me almost in a creepy way, but maybe not. Maybe it's just my paranoia. So I'm going to make some areas a little bit darker. Because anytime you can vary the color in a piece, it's going to look more awesome. Depth is key no matter what kind of medium you're using. And I'm out of paint, which is fine because we got that part done. So now I'm going to add the second color which is called something teal. That's good. It's a good name for this color. And this color is really kind of a light milky aqua. And it looks like this. It almost matches my shirt, but it's a little bit more blue. Okay, so that's the two colors next to each other. I wanted this to kind of look like it's glowing. I may have to mix some white.
I feel like it's too stagnant between the two colors. So I'm going to drop some of that first um, turquoise thalo into this little bit of aqua I have left to make kind of a two-tone color. You can see the two different tones in there. Jeff taught me. I know, Sue, they are the wedding colors, which makes my heart so happy. I'm going to use this trick that Jeff taught me to mix, oops, mix up the two colors. You just plug this and then pull back. So it almost <laughs> looks like the exact same color as the dark one, but that's fine. We'll just kind of be light with the application to blend them in. Oops. I'm trying to like come down in different areas and go back in some areas. Maybe that inside area is darker. Yep. You mix your makeup that way? I have yet to get um, any kind of good at airbrush makeup on myself. Not that I've done it on a person, but I feel like it'd be easier for me to do on a person than myself. All right, now that I got that cleaned out, this is what we got. So. You guys like the dark aqua glitter or no? Okay, it's too tight. Okay. Seems like we burned one last year. Oh, a solder gun? You could um, use a soldering gun, but, uh, or like a hot knife. Just be very, very careful with anything like that. G-U-D! So, here's our pumpkin so far. Ooh, I, hello, hello everyone. Oh, I thought we were frozen for a second. We're good. Also, it seems kind of choppy. We're back. So, here we are with our aqua pumpkin. So, I'm gonna get a new trash brush because I fully trashed this one. Whoops. But lucky for everybody, I ruined a lot of brushes. What's up, Jerry? Meow. I'm going to pour out some of our sizing liquid or glue. This is just the only liquid glue I have. So feel free to use whatever kind of glue you have at home. I wouldn't use a spray adhesive because I don't know if that would eat the... Um, Thank you. I thought they would um, accentuate each other well. I would even almost like take like a like a a color. What is like a bronze? Well, like a bronze or a a copper, like maybe even a gold, like transparent, like just gold. Just kind of like just hit right in the middle. Ooh, I like that. Just so that it kind of pops it. Yeah. It's really good. Let me, since I already have those glue started, do this and then we'll do that. Now I'm just kind of dabbing on this sizing or adhesive or glue. And for this part, I'm just going into the areas that I want the glitter. 
because while the gl great super there's red on my this but that's fine um, just going into the areas that I want the glitter even though there's gonna be some glitter that goes rogue anyways and just sticks wherever it wants to that's fine um, it may just look good that way like I always say there's beauty in imperfections So I'm also trying to kind of vary the thickness of the line that I'm adding the glitter to. I want it to be kind of thick in some areas, kind of thin in some areas. I want to get not right there. I want to get into the crevices and I don't want to have a straight line in, at any point. I want to have some depth 100% of the time and nothing that's just normal or straight or you know what I mean straight lines are a rarity in nature So some of the airbrush color is coming off onto my brush, which is fine because it's trash brush anyways. I don't think you'll have that issue if you use acrylic paint, but if you do use acrylic paint, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer for it to dry. Just be advised. Some of the red color from whatever was on this paintbrush already is coming off onto my this. But that's fine. Because we're about to color it, I mean, cover it all in uh, glitter anyways. Right? Right. Okay, now that we have the areas that we want glitter on it sticky, I'm going to put a piece of paper down so we don't waste anything. JK, I found a paper plate. Okay. So for this part, you can use whatever kind of glitter you want. I am using something, Color Flex. Uh, the name is Salty. Salty. Okay. So I'm just going to sprinkle it on the areas that I know I want the glitter, which would be this rim area. Hi, Lord Taylor, how are you doing? How are your eyes seeing my this? Does it look beautiful because you have new eyeballs? I'm going to tell myself that yes, your new eyeballs love my copper aqua patina geode pumpkin. I could have probably just go ham and just put the glitter everywhere in it and then dusted it off, but I'm trying to keep it from going into the center. But if you want it in the center, go for it. Go ham. Okay, I'm just gonna dust off the bottom part first. In my head, it will yeah, I wanted to do that first so when I dump this upside down, all of the glitter that we first put in doesn't get into that center area. What's up, Evelyn? The bad thing about sizing like I'm using is that it goes clear when it's ready to use, which is also probably, I guess, maybe a good thing, but it just makes it hard to see where I've been. <laughs> know what I mean, jelly beans? The cool thing about these pumpkins, doing them like this, is it's so easy to do them and they always look so awesome and unique. 
Bam. What do we think so far? If I had a lighter color of glitter of aqua, I would put it in the center, but I don't. So we're just gonna use glitter glass because you can't really go wrong with glitter glass anyways. If you guys are new here, I'm a glitter glassaholic. It looks like this. <gasps> I didn't know that bag was open. Man, I'm glad I didn't throw this. Derp. Um, glitter glassaholic. Just said we should make that a shirt, and I am inclined to agree. Okay, so just like with the glitter, we're just going to stipple or rough paint the adhesive in there. Obviously don't get too rough with it because you'll start picking up little bits of your pumpkin. See right here, I have some foam. It's not gonna focus because that's my life, but there's foam, there's foam on there. We're just gonna stipple this in into any area that we want the glitter glass. If you guys don't know, Glitter glass is a super fine, awesome shards of glitter. They are very sharp. So maybe if you're doing this with the kids, stick to glitter, regular glitter. And if you're having an adult craft night, don't drink too much wine before um, Huh? Yeah, don't drink too much wine before applying said glitter. I always like doing stuff like this when I'm around my family. Like last time I went home for Christmas um, and we decided to get crafty, we did those ornaments from Judy. Oh, we did do cakes one time. I failed, but we did do cakes one time. We tried to do um, mirror glaze cakes. Super fail, but super fun. So this sizing does go clear when it dries. Whatever kind of glue you use, just make sure it goes clear when you dry it or you're gonna be really bummed. Where's home for you? So, home is wherever my family is. It is currently in Dallas. That's where myself and my husband live. <clears throat> I still love saying that. And then, um, I know, I'm a dork. And then my mom lives in Alabama, World Tide. And then my sister is in the military, Jessica. She lives right now where she's stationed in Colorado. And then I have another sister that lives in Washington State. And then I have a brother that lives in Frisco. And then another brother and a sister that live in Iceland. We are from everywhere. <gasps> Ooh, crystal points would look good on the teeth, as teeth. Unfortunately, I am out, but I just got notification that I should have just resin in on Wednesday and color passion in on Monday. So excited about that. I'm putting a little bit of adhesive up into the glitter areas so that we get some glitter glass there too. Listen, glitter glass is always an option. I don't care who you are. It just is. Also, we've worked out a solution so that we won't end up with so much of a paint shortage in our shop. So thank you to everybody that's been patient with us while we get restocked. It hasn't been easy. Okay, 
So now we're all sticky everywhere. I mean, the pumpkin is, I'm not, I mean, I'm not. I mean, I have a little bit of sticky on my hands. Anyways, let's get a new this. Yay, we'll use this one. Iceland is so beautiful. Okay, now, if you haven't seen glitter glass before, it looks like this. You can get it from me at artiststilldeath.com or you can get it from MeyerImports.com. Use code ATD2022 for a discount. And you can use the code ATD for um, artisticpaintingstudio.com if you want the adhesive sizing. ATD for artistic painting studio. ATD 2022 for Meyer Imports glass. Okay. So as you can see, this glass is very fine. It's super thin. And the reason why it sparkles is because it's basically catching light in all different directions. So essentially all the different pieces are different facets that reflect light in different ways. And it always looks beautiful and elegant without being like, Oh, it's glitter. Some people think glitter is a little crafty and depending on the project I'm working on, I tend to agree. However, glitter glass is always an elegant look and you can make glitter look elegant too. I'm not saying that, no hate on glitter. You need to be canceled for anything nowadays, so you gotta be careful. If I get canceled because of glitter, I'm gonna be pissed. Anyways, I'm just going to shake it up in there. And I'll roll it about. Sounds like it's sticking really well. It looks like it's sticking really well. And I always do glitter or glitter glass or anything that I'm going to be frugal about over a plate or a piece of paper or something to wear. I can catch the fallout and then use the rest of it later. And that's what we look like. I almost feel like it's missing something, but also maybe not. B, what do you think? So these little white bits that are in here will um, dry clear and you'll see more of that bright aqua background. It's the same aqua that I used on this one. You can see that this is a lot better. It's a solid color and just a couple areas where it's still white on the inside. So this will do much the same. So. Let's just put this right here. Oh, geez. That was way too zoomed in. So all this white stuff up here is glue that hasn't dried yet. So all that will dry clear. Does it look like this pumpkin's laughing at me? I feel like it is. I think he looks good. Let's go see the ones that I did last year. I actually just recently found them. So we'll put them right here. Oh, that's a Christmas ornament. Never mind on that one. I just did white on the inside of this one. Wait a minute, I put fire glass on the inside of that one too. And then I did this big one. I 
Happy Halloween, everybody. I'm going to have to do another one with gold leaf on the inside. I think that looks pretty cool. Are you going to do the gold airbrush that Jeff suggested? Um, hand paint that or airbrush? Airbrush it. <gasps> I'm always so nervous when I airbrush. Okay. You want to do it? And we're working on this one too. Does it look like a mouth with an eye? I feel like it would make that sound. Okay. So, just suggested using this color. This is Createx Airbrush Pearlized something. Pearl Satin Gold. Should I put some water in this for you, B, or is it, um, is it okay if it's a little on the thicker side? Um, yeah, hold on. You have to... See how thick it is? not quite as runny. So what Jeff's talking about is adding a highlight essentially of gold to these areas of the pumpkin. These, can I do that for you? Just talking to them. I don't know you already... So this is very thick paint, so um, is that going to fall off of there? If it does, we'll just glue it back in. Let's what? Go on the back and just see what. Sure. What are your real pumpkin plans? You know, I have no idea what I'm actually going to do with those actual pumpkins. I thought about just doing a glitter look to it. It's too like, too not the color. Maybe what if? Because it's shiny. What if you just dusted it on and made it all kind of? Well, now that it's drying, it's just very subtle, which is what I was wanting. Yeah. I mean, there's a difference. Mhm. Mm What's up, Dainty Doer? I'm so glad you caught another live as well. So Jeff's just bringing a highlight onto the peaks of each one of these. What? Why do I want to say pumpkin folds? But that doesn't Let's sound bridge. right. Bridge? Swamper! So just a highlight to the ridge because yellow plays off the aqua color really well and it'll actually make our aqua color stand out a little bit better. This kind of gives it more detail. Layers and depth, people, layers and depth. So this first one was an accident, and I was like, I really like that look. That boop. Yeah, that looks good. Did we go all the way around already? Yeah. It's just very subtle. That gun, that was quick. But he says hi. Love him. I apparently have decided it's a him. So, accents are usually the best parts. I agree. Like, if I had time to get 
crazy crafty with it, I would probably airbrush some dark into these cracks with maybe the, um, he's got a burnt umber that might work. Maybe the brown oxide or the red oxide. It would look like the other, that smiley one. The dark I have on this one is red iron oxide and brown iron oxide. Does it look like a one-eyed Jim Henson character? Meh. Meh. All right. So. I love it. I hope you guys do too. If you are interested in getting um, these pumpkins, foam pumpkins, I'm going to add them to my um, Amazon shop, which you can find down in the description box. Boop, boop, boop. I'm going to add the exact ones that I got, which I think are these. Yeah. So $16 for the plain white ones or also $16 for the bronze colored ones. So I'm going to add them. <gasps> what? I thought I was going to add them to my this. Okay, y'all look at this till I get this figured out. Jason Momoa knows. Okay, I can't figure out my password, but I'll have it linked as soon as I get off the live, but these are the pumpkins. I got them in the bronze colorway. They look like that. And these are the sizes that they come in. Fun, 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 fun. So, Thank you guys so much for coming in and seeing what we are up to today. Hope you are going to give these tea tiny pumpkins a shot. They are a fun, inexpensive, very creative way to have like a night of artsy things. Let's get some glitter, glitter glass, and some sticky stuff, and exacto blade and some paint. It's supposed to look like a geode. We'll be back tomorrow. Um, yeah, tomorrow at two, uh, for our two o'clock live, I'll be doing resin tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Krish. And I hope you guys have an awesome evening. Stay safe if you're having bad weather. It's lightened up for the moment. But anyways. You guys have an awesome day. Be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. Always remember, we do the test. So you don't have to. I felt like more arose when I did that. Anyways, you guys have an awesome day. and We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Did you say bye, Bobo? Bowie, did you say bye? You did say bye. Are you so cute? Are you so cute? Who told you be so cute? Who did it? Who told you? I bet it was your dad. I bet it was your dad. Bye. I said bye.